glory father we praise and bless and honor the name of jesus the name that is above every name called by that name saved by that name named by that name functions in that name and we rejoice that we have this opportunity to walk in the light and grow in this light so revelation knowledge is gifted everybody under the sound of my voice the eyes of your understanding flooded with light and I decree that by the end of this service, you are equipped, built up, edified, and Jesus is glorified. Thank you, Father, for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name, and every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our faith together. As we say these words, I am born of God. I am born of the world. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word. I do the word naturally therefore today i will understand the word of his grace i will be built up by the end of this service i will never be the same never ever be the same again in jesus name and every believer says a powerful amen we well, want to welcome everybody connected to this service by way of kingdom life network facebook youtube twitter instagram all of the social media community brothers and sisters online help me share the video tag some people let's get the whole world to hear this message and we want to welcome the radio audience connected to the service right now we love you wherever you're connected guys call your friend your family members to tune to this radio station it's going to be an exciting adventure in the light of god's word we want to welcome all the power citizens around the world all their campuses we're glad to have all of you connected to the service we love you guys and we're glad you're here to be enriched with the word of his grace are we excited to be in church well if you're excited to be in church let's celebrate our fellowship in the light glory 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 grab your pen your notebook your bible you can be seated with your sweet smart self grab your phones and help me share the message let's get this word to the ends of the earth praise god the laborer and the harvest we have seen the laborer as a fisherman we have seen the laborer as a tent maker and we are examining the laborer as a tent mender the net mender who is he he is the one who supports an already existing work the net mender is one who supports an already existing work as a missionary goes from place to place, he will go also where there's a walk in a bid to give support to an already existing walk. So he will also be there to correct, apart from giving support, the missionary goes in to correct and to uphold the walk. To support, to correct, and to uphold the already existing work he mends the net why is he mending the net so that the harvest that has been reaped will not waste away will not waste away the harvest that has been gathered will not be scattered because one of the reasons why for the laborer is needed is so that the sheep will not be without a shepherd the sheep will not be scattered. That's the main issue. Because look at Matthew chapter 9, verse 36 to 38. Look at what Jesus said about the harvest. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted. And were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. So the first intent why the laborer is needed is because God is compassionate towards the sheep. The sheep are scattered. They are without a shepherd. So if you're a net mender, you don't want to scatter more sheep. You want to give direction. You want to uphold. You want to support what is already existing. You want to support an existing work. You want to give it all the support it needs, bring correction, and uphold the work. He is mending the net so that what has been done will not be undone. The whole work of mending the net is to consolidate the harvest 
to consolidate the harvest. It's not catching men as a primary responsibility. He is establishing men. Yet, he now has a walk cut out for him to strengthen what has been started. But this time around, it's not the one who started it. Someone else started it. He only came in to support, to correct, and to uphold the work. That's the net mender. And this could be a very dicey work. Because it will take a whole lot of patience on your part. You get to some places, you discover a local church there. But that local church is not doing so much. No doctrine, no evangelism, no discipleship. There are times you get to some places, you have to do a whole lot of building. Jesus said they were sheep, but without a shepherd. So we will have to provide direction for the people. Part of the work of this mender. And it's very dicey because a whole lot of people who would have been sent rather than understanding that they are net menders are now building a tent. Instead of mending the net, they are pulling down the net and trying to build a new work. Very dicey. Very dicey. They try to follow an already existing pattern. It happens where men, instead of strengthening what has been done, they will now want to establish their own team. They do not see the work as the work of Christ. They see the work as what will I gain? What is in it for me? So they are not thinking like Christ. They are thinking selfish. Very dicey. And it's dicey because you have a temptation of being selfish and at the detriment of the work that has already been started, you want to scatter in order to build. And in most cases, the people that are scattered become battered. So instead of helping the harvest, you actually make the harvest difficult. In fact, more difficult. You know, and especially these people who split churches. These people who come into churches and want to steal. They are sheep stealers. They steal sheep. They come into the church. They look for vibrant three, four, five, ten people. They get close to them. Make them their friends with an agenda. And you gullible who don't know how to discern, you follow gullibly. And then they gradually begin to share their vision. And begin to make you feel important in their vision. More than you feel in the house where you are fed. Then when they now create in you an importance. And they show you a need you should satisfy. They now lure you out of the house where you are supposed to be fed. And they say we are now a team to start a work. If you truly believe that God has called you to start a walk, why don't you go to where sinners are? Get people born again afresh. Labor over them, disciple them, and start. Because that's the way the walk is started in scripture. You don't steal sheep. You are a thief. And what you sow, you will reap. Ah. Uh, and the good thing is that the harvest is always surplus. That's the good thing. The harvest is surplus. I have never, never been found to break any walk. I've never been found to be part of a disloyalty campaign against a walk. I have never been found to have ever cajoled anybody's member to come to my ministry. Never. I have never been found building a relationship with another member in another church for material gain. When I go to preach and members of a church are blessed, they follow me with their complimentary cards. They want to be closed. They'll be giving me money with complimentary cards. 
with their number so that me and them can start relating so that they can send more money i give pastor philemon both the cards and the money when we get to the hotel the cards are trashed we don't need it we have never never carried anybody's card from any church to store their number in order for us to be relating with them never it is my discipline as a preacher and my integrity as a preacher and my loyalty to the overall well-being of the body of christ never i've never sown it to in anybody's ministry so i cannot reap it in my ministry <laughs> only a fool no matter how beautiful your father's friend's house is it can never be your home after all is said and done you go back home home is home <laughs> but there are sheep stealers who come as net menders so that's why the work is dicey brother paul said i have never built on another man's foundation because if you come into power city and you take members out those members were not established by you they were my sweat and my labor so anything you do with them you are building on my foundation your labor will not be recognized so it's like doing what is not recognized that's why paul will say timothy you are my son i have begotten you through the gospel you see the way i labor over you the way i labor over you anybody that will want to lay claim on you must be an afternoon thief no thieves walk at night but the bold ones go in the afternoon <laughs> very dicey part of the walk because you will be tempted you will be tempted i've gone to ministries where i teach the word for five days members meet me outside on my way to my car dr damina our pastor doesn't teach like this why don't you start something let's just team up and start something start what something no i don't start things christ starts things keep following the teachings but i won't come and start a walk because i'll be building on another man's foundation i didn't know how you got born again I was not there to labor for you. When you had problems, I was not there. When you needed prayer, I was not there. When you needed follow-up, I was not there. When you were going through rough times, I was not there. That man was there. He may not have doctrine, but he was there for you. It's simple loyalty and common sense to know that a man that has been there for you, both through thick and thin, deserves some level of loyalty. I'm not saying you should stay with him and, and die without doctrine. But I'm saying there's a way things are done decently. We are not street men. We are kingdom citizens. Especially when you are posted on missionary work to a church where the pastor doesn't know how much you know. It can be tempting for you to want to kick him out and take over his work. Meanwhile, you are there to disciple the pastor as you disciple the members so that by the time you leave the pastor is better equipped to do the work you alone cannot do the work we need more laborers we need more laborers when i go to a church to preach i do not try to put their pastor down i do not i promote the pastor even if he doesn't know anything i promote him because that's why i came that's why he brought me i promote him i make him look good before his people but at the same time i do justice to the word of god and at the same time i still ask the people to be loyal and then at the back i talk to him you need to listen more this is a lot of work for you you need to sit up because if you don't and your members grow more than you they will leave you so you better sit up and i will give him materials if he wants i will ask the office email all of this 500 part teaching send it to that pastor for free 
And I will call him as you are listening. If there's anything you don't understand, ask me questions. I have pastors calling me from different nations. Sometimes they keep me on phone for one, two hours discussing doctrine from the things I taught so they can have more clarity to teach their church. Because it is one body, it is one work. The rewarder is Jesus. I'm not building a kingdom. I don't own a kingdom. The kingdom is our God's. I'm just a part of those helping to build it. Are you all following? You will need to know my manner of life apart from knowing my doctrine. That's why I'm sharing some of these things with you. Because tomorrow you may be sent somewhere. You may be found somewhere in a work that is struggling. Your job there is to mend. Is to correct, to support. Not to scatter. Not to divide. There are some bad people. Anywhere they enter, they create trouble. Brother David called them strange children. He said, may God deliver me from strange children. Moses called them children in whom there is no faith. Very strange. So there will be a temptation to start your own work. Ministry is grace. Ministry is not energy. It's grace. There's a way you can come against grace and you'll be disgraced. Ministry is grace. It's not by might. None of us call ourselves. Huh? None of us call ourselves. Don't try to. Uh, because the repercussions are there. No faith confession can stop the repercussion. The repercussion of your action cannot be stopped by the grace of God. Cannot. It cannot. You will harvest it. Huh? Paul said, Alexander the copper smith has done me much evil. God will pay him. It's not Old Testament. It's the father of grace talking. God will reward him. That means there is a reward for all actions. And you will harvest it to complete basket. So remember that when you get involved with ministries as I'm training you and behave yourself. Yeah, this is very important. Don't do what you have not seen me do. And that's a trap many ministers fall into. Rather than see yourself as one that will strengthen the work you will discover that in areas like that, you may have to do a lot of correction by teaching. You call the pastor, you teach him. When he's persuaded, you teach the church. You teach the pastor, you teach the church. If the pastor resists your teaching, leave the church and leave him with his work. You are not the one that will account for that work. Leave him with his work. Pray for him from afar. It's better to leave that work like that and let God supernaturally bring help than for you to force help that will not be accepted and cause confusion. I told you I've been around. And in making correction, you may have to borrow from what Jude said. Contend earnestly for the faith that was once delivered unto us. Referring to the gospel. What is the gospel? It talks about the facts of Jesus' humanity. The facts of Jesus' death. The facts of Jesus' burial. The facts of Jesus' resurrection and ascension. Which none of it must be faulted or misunderstood in our communication. He came as a man. He died as a man. He was buried as a man. He rose as God. Is that the gospel? I repeat again. I repeat again. He came as a man. He died as a man. He was buried as a man. He rose as God. Is that the gospel? What is the gospel? He rose as a man. And today he's seated at the right hand of God as God. As a man, there is one mediator between God and man. Who is he? The man. So today, Christ is a man on behalf of us men. That's the gospel. 
If any of those facts is faulted, it is no more the gospel. Because the gospel is fact sensitive. We contend for those things. John talks about Antichrist. Who is the Antichrist? First John chapter 4 verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Next verse. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Next verse. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. This is that spirit of Antichrist. So Antichrist is not a man. Antichrist is a spirit that is communicated through teaching that denies the facts of the humanity of Christ. That's Antichrist. That's Antichrist. A teaching that denies the facts of the humanity of Christ. Whereof you have heard that it shall come. And even now already, that spirit is in the world. A spirit that confesses that Jesus did not come in the flesh. So you have to understand, when the Bible talks about false teachers, who are they? A false teacher can be a Christian, can be a born again believer, saved, but he's a false teacher. Because he refuses to sit down to be taught sound doctrine. So he's teaching things that are not consistent with the word of God. He's born again, but he's a false teacher. He's not an antichrist. He's just a false teacher. Because he's teaching what does not agree with sound doctrine. So there's a difference between antichrist and false teachers. We contend against unbelievers. Or teachers and doctrines that are against the fundamental facts of the gospel. Look at what John said we should do to them. Second John chapter 1 verse 7. Are you getting blessed? For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Next verse. Look to yourselves. Turn to your neighbor and say, look to yourself. Look to yourselves. That we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Now observe what he says we should do. Next verse. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, he does not believe that Christ is a man, does not have God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he had both the Father and the Son. Next verse. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine of the Father and the Son, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. Next verse. For he that bideth him Godspeed is a partaker of his evil deeds. If he's speaking on TV, switch it off. Don't let that voice sound in your house. If he's speaking on radio, change the channel. Don't switch off. Bible says if you tell him, save Johnny, you are a partaker of his evil works. That is, don't tell him, save Johnny. <laughs> John is angry, man. <laughs> praise God. I say, praise God. That is, anybody that does not teach that Jesus comes in the flesh, don't bid him God's speed, he's antichrist. Now, this is not somebody that disagree with you on clapping or manner of dressing. Those are non-essentials. Those are not issues to argue over. You cover scarf, thank God. You wear cap, thank God. You know wear cap, thank God. Ah. Cap, no cap, doesn't save. Dress, no dress, doesn't save. So we can disagree on those. But we cannot disagree on the fact that Jesus came as a man, died as a man, was buried as a man, rose as a man, and today he's a man. If you don't agree, we have no basis for discourse. It is on that that our discussion starts from. Look at how Paul said it. 
There are factions among you, so we know who is who. So we know who is genuine. Look at Paul. Paul didn't say there are factions among you because you want to close this church down. You are all causing confusion in the church to make the church look bad. No. Paul looked at it from a positive light. He said, yes, there is confusion in the church. There is strife and factions in the church. But that is how we know those that are genuine. He looked at the strife from a positive angle. That we may know those that are genuine. That we may know those that belong to the vision. He took the positive aspect. Brother Paul said, I come to you in weakness and in trembling. In, in 1 Corinthians 1 7, he said, I have taught you that you are not left behind in spiritual things. I have trained you so that you come behind in no gift. I've taught you how to flow in the supernatural. He says, I have not left you ignorant of spiritual things. 1 Corinthians 12, 1. Concerning spirituals, I have labored. You are not ignorant. So he has labored over them. Yet in spite of his labor, which they knew, some of them did not like him. In that same church at Corinth, some people didn't like Paul and some people didn't want him. It's part of ministry. As a net mender, it's part of the job. To get to places where there are divisions. So how do I handle strife? Look at Paul's situation. Number one, they started to compare Paul with other ministers. They began to compare their pastor with other ministers. That is the problem in Corinth. They began to compare brother Paul with other ministers. They compared him with Peter. In 1 Corinthians 3. In fact, some ignoramuses in that church compared Paul with Jesus. They say Paul is exactly teaching like Jesus. In fact, he's better than Jesus. In that same church. Where you see people that say them to be comparing men of God. They are not just babies. They are idiots. What did I call them? Idiots. Because idiots is idiotis. He said comparing themselves with themselves. They are not wise. When a man is not wise, what is he? Huh? He's an idiot. It's not competition. Ministry is grace. I can never be like any other preacher on earth. And no preacher on earth is like me. I'm the only one that is like this. And I don't want to be like anybody else. I want to be me. They began to judge Paul's actions. Can you believe? Pastor Priest. They were judging Paul. Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul. <laughs> Ignoramuses sat down and they were judging him. Say it's like his anointing has reduced. You know, before he used to preach with fire, now it's cold water. They were judged in that church in Corinth. These are people he has labored over. These are people that wouldn't have known their left from their right if not for Paul. Now they have known something small. They can now sit down and be judging Paul. It's part of it. Sometimes you labor over people and the same people stand up and say you don't know anything. <laughs> if you do it to me, your disciples will do you worse. Because <laughs> all of you are raising disciples. So the way you are treating me, your disciples will give you good measure. It's not a prayer. It's what will happen. Your disciples, they are the ones that will be used to judge you. <laughs> what you say, you repo. No faith confession will stop it. No faith confession will stop it. They began to judge his actions. They judge his motives. Look at 1 Corinthians 4.3. You will love this. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you. Or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not my own self. Since when I want judge me, no problem. Be judging me. Paul is talking to the church in Corinth. 
Because they are now judging him. He used to pray well before. Now he doesn't pray well. You know, before when he preaches, fire. Now when he preaches, I don't feel it. They are judging their pastor. These are the same people that before, when Paul is teaching, they will be weeping because of the depth of insight, because of the sweetness of the message. Now the same people. I say, the thing is not touching me. It's like he's no more praying like before. They are judging brother Paul. <laughs> people in church are wonderful. Very wonderful. Do you know that Pastor Priest, at a point, these people call Brother Paul a false apostle. They call him a false apostle. They said Paul is not of God. Is that serious? This church in Corinth. That was why Paul now sat down and wrote 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and chapter 12 to defend that I'm not false. Two chapters to the same people that he has labored over. They began to doubt his apostolic work. A number of people started disobeying him openly. Go and read chapter 11 and 12 of 2 Corinthians. You'll see it. He began to tell them, don't you know me? Don't you know me? He's asking them. Look at 2 Corinthians 11, 2 to 8. For I'm jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Next verse. But I fear, lest by any means, as a serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Next verse. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, which you have not received, or another gospel, which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. For I suppose I was not a wit behind the very cheapest apostle now he's explaining himself but though i be rude in speech yet not in knowledge but we have been truly made manifest among you in all things we have proven ourselves look at paul explaining to a people that are spiritual children i'm not a dubious person i'm not a criminal i've been among you i've labored among you you all know me i'm not the way you people are thinking of. how how will the people have behaved to make Paul come down to be trying to explain and defend himself. Have I committed an offense in abasing myself that you might be exalted? Because I have preached to you the gospel freely. If it was churches where pastors will tell you, come to the altar, lie down, roll on the floor, drop an expensive offering. If not, I see an accident tomorrow morning. You will drop the offering and respect them. But because we have given you the gospel for free, we have charged you nothing. We have made things simple for you. We have granted you the gift of access. Then you now want to insult us. You now take things for granted. You lose your sense of value. Now you don't see what we're doing as anything important. If you had to pay, you will pay with trembling and fear. But now we have made it easy. I robbed other churches, taking wages of them. To do you service. I got money from other sources. So I can serve you. Without putting a responsibility on you. I didn't put you under pressure. To support my ministry by all means. I made it free. Those are the travels of an apostle. Those are the travels of a tent Menda. Look at the next verse. And when I was present with you and wanted, I was chargeable to no man. Even when I lacked, I didn't bother you. For that which was lacking to me, the bread and which came from Macedonia supplied. And in all things, I have kept myself from being burdensome unto you. And so will I keep myself. Next verse. As the truth of Christ is in me, man shall not stop me of these boas in the regions of Achaia. Next verse. Wherefore, because I love you not, God know it. But what I do, that I will do. That I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. Next verse. For such are false apostles. I'm not the false apostle. Those are the false apostles. Deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. 
Next verse. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. Next verse. I say again. Let no one of you think of me a fool. If otherwise, yet as a fool receive me that I may boast myself a little. Sunesis, brother Paul. That which I speak, I speak it not after the Lord, but as it were foolishly in this confidence of boasting. These are oxymorons. Seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. Okay. Next. I love this. I love the way Paul is going to start talking now. For you suffer fools gladly, seeing you yourselves are wise. Oxymoron. For you suffer if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take off you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face. I speak as concerning reproach. As though we had been weak. How be it? Wherein soever any is bold. I speak foolishly. I am bold also. Hmm. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. You are respecting them and you are not respecting me. How are they better than me? Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. <laughs> I love brother Paul. In labors, more abundant. In stripes, above measure. In prisons, more frequent. In deaths, oft. Next verse. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeys often. In perils of waters. In perils of robbers. In perils of my own countrymen. In perils by the hidden. In perils in the city. In perils in the wilderness. In perils in the sea. In perils among false brethren. In weariness and painfulness. In watchings often. In hunger and thirst. In fastings often. In cold and nakedness. Beside those things that are without. That which cometh upon me daily. The care of all the churches. Who is weak? And I am not weak. Who is offended? And I burn not. If I must need glory. I will glory of the things. Which concern my infirmities. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Which is blessed forevermore. Knoweth that I lie not. This is an apostle looking for how to give his children in the faith a value for his labor. Because they had gotten to a place of familiarity. They were taking things for granted and abusing the privilege of being pastored properly. The travels of an apostle. The things in that men that suffers. He told them the sacrifices he had to make to bring the gospel to them. It was not necessary, but in this instance, it became necessary. He was saying this to prove himself to them. He said, I shouldn't be saying this, but you people are compelling me to say it. <laughs> Look at chapter 12, verse 6 to 11. For though I will desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear. Lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or he that heareth of me. Next verse. Unless I should be exalted above measure, through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Next verse. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. Next verse. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmity that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Next verse. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Next verse. I am become a fool in glory. You have compelled me. I didn't want to talk about my CV. I didn't want to be telling you about the things I have done to serve you. But you have compelled me. You have given me no choice than to make me bring my CV before you. 
so that you understand the quality of ministry. How much I have to suffer to be a blessing to you. Uh, men of God, why did they block people from meeting men of God? Uh, they didn't wish to block people from seeing Jesus. Who told you? When they brought little children, what happened? They drove them. Who drove them? Eh? That means Jesus had protocol. But the woman with the issue of blood, why couldn't she touch Jesus? Why did she have to come from the back? Because it was protocol. The gift of access is a privilege, not a right. Please write it down. The gift of access given to you by any true laborer of the gospel is a privilege, not a right. And if you take access for granted, you lose it. So every time service finishes, you see me hang around there to greet you, talk to you, pray for some of you. <laughs> it's not a right, it's a privilege. And don't take it for granted. When they came and saw Jesus talking to the Samaritan woman, they wanted to drive away. It's Jesus that stopped them. So don't always think it's a right. Access to a man is a privilege. So you know what brother Paul said, Pastor Praise as I close. He said, okay, since all these things I did for you, you did not appreciate them. Forgive me this wrong. <laughs> he said, forgive me this wrong. You know what he was saying? From now. From now. I will charge you. You will do things you are supposed to do. I will not let you off on anything. Since I did it, you didn't appreciate it. Forgive me this wrong. I repent. When you do not treat a ministry that labors over you with honor, you don't get blessed. Jesus went to his hometown and could do nothing for anybody. Why? Because they took him for granted. We must be a people of honor. I must be a people of value. I must be a people who understand what it takes for men of God to minister to you. You must. Don't take it for granted. Every time you see us stand here to minister to you, know that so much labor has gone into it. Receive it with honor. Are you blessed? Glory to God. Stand on your feet. Glory to God. Boro Tell your neighbor, walk in honor. Receive ministry with honor. And receive from this house with honor. So that you're fully blessed. So you can get the best of this ministry. I didn't hear a powerful amen. Turn to your neighbor, say, You are a fisherman. You are a tent maker. You are a tent mender. You must know how to handle crisis, factions, divisions. I want you to walk to three people and tell them you will be offended in this church. Tell them, tell them you'll be offended in this church. But refuse to take offense. Tell them you'll be offended, but refuse to take offense. Tell them refuse to take offense. Because you will be offended. Glory to God. Grab somebody and begin to pray for that person. Let's pray for one another. Pray for one another. Let's pray for one another. Let's pray for one another. The grace to be able to handle crisis. The grace to be able to handle offenses. The grace to be able to handle misbehaviors. The grace to be able to handle divisions. As a minister, the grace to handle crisis, situations, challenges. Let's pray for one another. Up and down everywhere. Let's pray for one another. Let's pray for one another. Let's pray for each other. Let's pray for each other. Mota kolene mosota la namaha. The ability to handle crisis, ministry crisis.
Leave your neighbor whole. Another neighbor begin to pray for your new neighbor. The grace not to handle access and spiritual things for granted. The grace not to take the things of the spirit for granted. The grace to stay in honor. The grace to stay in respect where spiritual things are concerned. The grace to honor the gift of God. The grace to honor the gift of grace among us. Let's pray for one another. Let's pray for one another. Rebuke familiarity. Rebuke familiarity. We refuse to walk in the paths of familiarity. Zeko takalanamas. Zeko tabalanamahas. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Now begin to pray for yourself. Begin to pray for yourself. Father, my values are put in their proper perspective. I value the things of the spirit. I value the things of God. I value my pastor's place in my life. I value supernatural relationships. Begin to pray for yourself. That your value systems will be in their right places. That you be a man of value, a woman of value for the things of God, for the spirituals. I think the things of the spirit serious. Zigo Zagalabas. Zigo Zabalabas. Zigo Zabalabas. Zigo Zabalabas. Zigo Zabalabas. In the name of Jesus. I didn't hear your amen on a note of finality. If you believe that prayer is answered, let me hear that amen like you know it's answered. Listen carefully. A John the Baptist. A John the Baptist. He had a voice from heaven. He saw the spirit descending bodily on Jesus. But when he got into offenses, he said, go and ask him, is he the real Jesus or should we look for another one? The man is in offense. The ministry that blessed him, the ministry for which he was a prophet, he's now challenging that ministry. Is he the real? This is the same John who saw the spirit descend, who had the voice. Who said, Behold the Lamb of God? Now, in offense, he says, Ask him, is he the real Jesus, or should we look for another? Because of dishonor, he died in the hands of a small girl who shook her waist. Dishonor, let me tell you, when you are in dishonor, you will never see what God is doing. Never. When you are in dishonor, you will never know what God is doing anymore. Dishonor keeps you out of the radar of the divine move of God. Offenses. Jesus said offenses will come, but woe unto him through whom it comes. So you cannot avoid offenses in a church like this. People will offend you, but you must refuse to take it. Refuse to take it. Be so much in honor that you don't notice offense. Did you hear what I said? Be, be so much where that for in so doing you will save yourself and you save those who hear you hallelujah have I blessed you because as a child of God you must never get familiar with the things of God no no it's a bad culture run away from it honor what God honors reverence what God reverences that way you remain fresh. That way you remain secured. That way you remain in the plan of God for your life. Father, I pray for everybody. In this building online and in the campuses. That the revelation of your word grows big in our hearts. We receive correction. We receive rebuke. We receive instruction. And we make the adjustments. In the name of Jesus. And I decree that this church goes from strength to strength. Thank you that an army is rising in this assembly that will shake the world with the gospel. And we're a people of honor, a people of respect.
we are a people that honor god honor his word we honor our pastor we honor our coordinators we honor the brethren we honor supernatural relationships we honor the church of god and we pray lord that as we continue to grow and abound and fulfill the ministry of giving to us no one here will be taken advantage of by the devil in the name of jesus we give you praise for answer prayer in jesus precious name and every believer says that amen on a note of finality if you're blessed in this service go ahead and express your joy is that how you express joy is that how we express joy glory we trust that you have been blessed by this message to order the complete series of this message and all the messages by dr abel daminer please call plus 234-806-800-9939 or email powercityoffice at gmail.com This 